What's the difference between system and application software? Stick with me and find out in this video. My name is Tim Bachalka from the Learn Programming Academy, and I'm going to be talking about system software in this video. You'll learn the difference between system and application software as well. There's two classifications of software, system and application. And in this video, I'll talk briefly about system software, which generally includes operating systems and utility programs. In the next video, I'll cover application software. So what's the difference between system and application software? We'll see if this example gives you a sense of the difference. Most of us just expect all software, system and application to just work. However, most non-computing consumers, and that's probably not you, don't know and don't care to know about system software. They just wanna play games, write papers with word processing, do accounting and spreadsheets, etc., which is classified as application software or apps. An analogy that I've used for many years to distinguish and explain system from application software utilizes a live play or concert, both of which need men and women dressed in black as support staff working behind the scenes. Those people are analogous to system software. But the actual actors for the play and the musicians for the concert are the real reason I take in a play or a concert, which is much like the application software, which will do all the work I need it to do, whether it's playing the game, writing the document, paying the bills, or whatever. The role of an operating system in any computing device is to coordinate a computer's internal activities as well as oversee its communication with the outside world. Without the operating system, the computer hardware can do nothing. Knowing about the operating system is central to being an enlightened computer user or programmer. Most operating systems chunk work into jobs based on the application software being executed by the operating system. Some jobs are done in what is called batch processing, which requires very little, if any, end user interaction. Today, many of these jobs run in the background throughout the day or night, and you and I rarely know they exist, except for the amount of RAM they consume or the impact they have on the computer's performance. The other type of job is called real-time processing. This type of processing is what you and I demand of our computing devices every day. We surf the web, we launch a game, we open and edit documents and so forth. The operating system must be able to accommodate this right now type of processing or we just give up and stop using the computer. In a single user system like our desktops, laptops, tablets, phones and wearables, the operating system allows you and I to switch between the various activities as I just mentioned. The operating system uses a concept that's called multitasking whereas the server computers that allow tons of users to interact simultaneously with it use the concept called multiprogramming. In both multitasking and multiprogramming, the operating system divides time into intervals, and then the execution of each job is restricted to only one interval at a time. At the end of each interval, the current job is temporarily set aside and another is allowed to execute during the next interval. By rapidly shuffling the jobs back and forth in this manner, it creates the illusion of several jobs executing simultaneously. Have you ever wanted to use a particular item, bicycle, automobile, game controller, or a good book, and you discover that your friend or family member is using the item? Both of you cannot use these types of items simultaneously, can you? Well, the same is true for the resources associated with a computer. What if two apps want a direct output to a printer at the same time? Or what if modern apps want access to the same data simultaneously? How can this be handled? Operating systems must manage this competition for resources, and in the case of printing, for example, the operating system uses a term called spooling to put printer output in a first-in, first-out queue, and then releases the output in sequential order. Another issue that could arise is known as deadlock. This occurs when two or more apps are blocked from progressing because each is waiting for a resource that is allocated to another app. For example, one app has access to the printer while waiting for access to a DVD player, and another app has access to the DVD player while waiting for access to the printer. Deadlocks are not very common today, but when they occur, a super user or user with administrative privileges may be required to kill at least one of the apps. Kill is a strong word, but that is the term used for such situations in computing. Operating systems play a vital role in the security of the computer, its processes, and its data. Security is a huge topic, so just some simple aspects are offered for you to think about here. Attacks can come from the outside, hence the need for login authentication credentials, 
and other security aspects such as two-phase authentication, also known as two-factor authentication, which sends a time-sensitive code to another device. That code must be entered after your authentication credentials to gain access to the computer or website. Another often used security concept is known as a capture. This concept often presents you with a series of scrambled letters and numbers that you must manually enter or a series of images that you must click on certain ones that meet the capture requirement in order to prove that you're not a robot or bot. Attacks that the operating system must guard against also come from the inside once an authorised user gains access to the computer. The operating system makes sure no app gains access to main memory that's allocated to another app. There are other safeguards for inside attacks and these are covered in the section on utility programs coming up. The evolution of operating systems continues with the emergence of multiprocessor machines such as dual and quad core processors for example has led to operating systems that provide multiprogramming and multitasking capabilities by assigning different tasks to each of the different processors as well as sharing the time of each involved single processor. These operating systems must wrestle with such challenges as load balancing, dynamically allocating tasks to the various processors so that all processes are used effectively, as well as scaling, which involves separate tasks into a number of subtasks compatible with the number of processors available. Oh my, exciting software. Software that supports and enhances the role of the operating system is known as utility programs. These programs are provided by the operating system's creator and are used for the installation of the operating system and other features once the operating system is running. A few examples of these programs include ones that format storage devices, copy files to a storage device, compress and decompress data, playing multimedia presentations, and software for handling network communications. A couple of utility programs that focus on security include auditing software that record and analyze activities that take place with the computer. Auditing software is also designed to detect the presence of sniffing software, which is software added by a malicious intruder that records activities and later reports them to the intruder. Do you want to find out more about apps and how they work? Well, stay tuned for the next video where we'll explore this in more detail. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Okay, here's where I meant to pump you to click on the subscribe and click on the bell notification. Do that if you want to keep updated with the videos. There's also links on this page, who knows where they are, but uh, you'll find the first video in the series, which might be a good thing to do if you're not watching the first one or the previous video. So click on those links, subscribe, do whatever. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.